All right. I'm here with Towson head coach, Pat Scary. Uh, thank you for coming on. You know, I greatly appreciate it. I want to talk about a bunch of things from you. I know you got your roots, your URI uh, Providence roots, uh, but also obviously you have a big year ahead of you uh, this year. You know, first off, obviously, congratulations. I know you guys, you know, winning the conference uh, last year, such a great accomplishment. You know, I know in in a league as the CAA, obviously there, you know, you have that tournament um, at the end of the year, like every conference to make it to the NCAAs. I know you guys fell a little bit short, um, but you did win the conference. What, is, what was that balance for you just in the off season, kind of celebrating, you know, the title, but also, you know, a little bit of the disappointment, obviously, of, of not winning that last game? Yeah, I'd say that's a good question, and, and I appreciate you having me on. Um, yeah, we, we were excited about what you know, we've been – we've had some really good teams here, but we hadn't won a regular season championship, and I was just really proud of our staff and and our players. I said this a lot in, in 30 years of coaching. It was the most enjoyable group I've ever been around. Um, and to go from four wins during an incredibly challenging pandemic season – to 25 division one wins, you know, when you don't buy games or anything like that, it, it, it was, we did enjoy it. And I wanted our guys to enjoy it. Um, yeah. We got beat by a good Delaware team in the conference semis. Um, arguably our best player got hurt in the quarterfinals. And, you know, so that's part of basketball. Um, you know, it, it, it's funny because I was ready to try to do it again. Um, we know what the goal is, but we really try to preach to our guys is, we got to be good today. We got to develop good habits. If we're good most days, that's going to create the opportunities we want later on. Um, you know, how does that end up? I don't, you know, I don't know. I think everybody's got the same goals this yeah. <laughs> this time of year. I just kind of feel like, you know, if we have the right habits, then we'll be in a position to have success later on. Definitely. And you know, you guys, you know, are a favorite this year. You know, you're returning you know, four guys, the average double digits, uh, you'll be experienced, talented. What for you, you know, with the makeup of the team going into this year, um, what are some things you think you can improve upon despite obviously, like I said, having great success last year, but kind of taking even that next step of growth as a basketball team. Yeah. That, this is the most talented group we've had from top bottom of roster. Um, and I'm really appreciative of, you know, Timberlake Gibson, Holden and Thompson for, coming back uh, it just doesn't happen in these days so I'm, I'm gonna you know we're gonna keep those guys healthy obviously and then you know we're gonna play those guys uh because i am appreciative that they came back and i trust them i think for us to you know what do we got to do better you know uh we got to continue to take care of the ball uh right now we're not there yet on that and we've got to finish better that's something statistically even though we had a good year we didn't do a good enough job then I think, what's the leadership look like? You know, um, uh, we've got those those older guys. They understand what we need to do. I, but I think, like in Rizzuto and Nolan and Gray, we had really good leaders. Uh, these guys, like uh, a kid Thompson and Gibson, they would find um, they would find the goodness in in a uh, probably a, a serial killer. They're, they're really nice guys. And and Holden and Timberlake are Type A personalities which is makes them really good players, but both those two sets, they have to kind of get out of their comfort zone to, to help us lead. You know, it's, if, if, if we're player led, it's going to be a lot more productive for us than if we're, we're, we're coach led. So that's, that, that's, that's absolutely still evolving. Um, and then guys are going to have to, you know, accept what they get in the name of winning, which, which isn't always easy to do. Yep. Definitely. And, you know, you um, God, obviously you mentioned, you know, obviously how excited a lot of these guys coming back. And that is a testament, I think, obviously to you and to the program, you know, you have been long known as one of the best recruiters, you know, even your time in the big East, one of the best recruiters there. What for you has been the biggest challenge outside of obviously the transfer portal, but just how has recruiting changed for you, you know, over your obviously extensive and successful career? Yeah, another really good question. It, it, it has. I think, you know, we had such a challenging experience with COVID. I think it forced us to reassess um, who we're recruiting and, and you know, the, the characteristics of, of the student athlete and, and, and playing a little bit differently. But 
you know, we're all worried about the transfer portal. I, I like to remind people we we struggle with the transfer portal. Before there was a transfer portal, I lost two terrific all league sophomores a couple of years ago, coming off of a really good year. So uh, it, things can change quickly, and then yeah, we're in, we're in an era of name, image, likeness, um, and you know we, we've got to do more things to uh, to help our, our student athletes, and, and our, our our people are aware of that. But this is this is different times, and I, and I think you've got to. Um, You've got to adapt to those things. Um, so I'm excited for now, but then I'm excited, anxious about how do we how do we continue to try to do it at a high level? Yep, definitely. And, you know, it's great to see, too, how I feel like, you know, even with social media and, you know, I joke, you know, not I joke, but people talk about this new media. And, you know, a lot of people can push back or say it's not like this. It's not like the old days. But like you said, you have to adapt. This is the way things are now. You know, so it's great to see how people evolve. I feel like you either evolve with it, you know, or you kind of, you know, you beat the same drum of it shouldn't be like this. It shouldn't be like this. You know, it, it is what it is. Um, yeah, I don't think you can stand on, on a soapbox. You know, I don't, it's, it, it is what it is. And, and um, you know, like I so said, we have tried to uh, evolve. And, 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 you know, I'm very self-critical. I, I think there's, if I look back earlier in my career, there's a lot of things I wish I did differently, whether it was in recruiting or evaluations of that or, or how I coach certain guys. Um, so you try you try to get better, right? I say all the time to our, our staff or players, I, I'm going to most mistakes because I'm going to make the most decisions. Yeah. But I do think, you know, the one I only worked for Jamie Dixon for a year, but I was blown away at how incredibly self-critical he was. And, and I think that what's made him an, an elite coach. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, I do, obviously, you know, I cover college hoops in new England predominantly, you know, specifically, obviously with Rody vault, you guys are, you know, you're going to be visiting new England a couple times in the non-conference, um, you know, not talking specifics, but just, you know, with your game at UMass also at Bryant, I think two programs that are on the rise. I don't know if you can speak a little bit just to kind of those, those games, the excitement of that and and playing a a great non-conference schedule. Yeah, we, we do. We have, uh, we've always tried to schedule aggressively and this will be no different. Um, you know, we had two games left to get and quite honestly, we couldn't get anyone to play at home. Anyone, you know, we don't buy games. Um, I went to my older guys. I said, you want to play non ones? You want me to go out and we have to play a couple really good teams. They said, let's, let's play really good teams. So we got Bryant first who, you know, they have an Atlantic 10 caliber talent team, okay. you know, that they'll, They'll be the it'll be hard them or Vermont to win the America East. Um, and, and Jared's done an unbelievable job there. So that's a tough game, uh, good yeah. series. And then you know, honestly, no one in the Atlantic Ten would play us. Uh, we struggled the last couple of years, especially the teams right within a couple hours of us. Um, so Frank, um, we called Frank, and, and yeah, he 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 reached back, and obviously they they've loaded up quickly, and he's coached in a in a final four, but, but a great series for us, you know, much like Rhode Island, you know, UMass to me that the name carries, um, you know, that's a big rivalry in, in roadie country. And I was, yeah. I was part of that, but it, it, it's, it's a good series for us. They'll return the game here the following year. And I've, I've always felt like Nathan, like for us, okay, if we play a really good schedule, that creates opportunities that maybe you can have that special year, mm-hmm. you know, and be mentioned going into your league. Um, but also with that, if, you don't play well. You, f- you figure out pretty quickly what you better do better when you get into our league and our league's good. It's 12th best league last year in the RPI. And, um, you know, we best in our league and a lot of that has to do with playing a tough non-conference schedule. Definitely. No, I, I agree. And like I said, I- I'm looking forward to it. I'm definitely gonna hopefully get to both of those games, but at least one of them for sure. Hopefully I hope, I hope I'm, I hope I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> to I'm not sure. I'll yeah. tell you afterwards. All right. Well, I, I appreciate you know, I think all of in college, of college basketball, sadly, because of analytics, um, you know, who you play, what you do, how you, you know, how you decide if you're going to take on a team. It's, it has, you know, in my opinion, kind of destroyed a little bit, even of rivalries. You know, I was, I was actually talking to uh, Martelli, the associate head coach at Bryant, you know, and he had mentioned, you know, it's just, he couldn't, he can't find anyone to play. You know, you reach that point sometimes. I think towns, is, you know, you guys are in the same boat where, you get good enough where it's like, it, it's not safe and it's too much of a risk. And I feel like those programs are kind of in the yeah. middle. 
Yep. Yep. No, you're right. That's, that's part of the deal. Uh, you know, I just say that's like, uh, you know, I have a couple of people tell me you should take it as social media talk, about who won't play or, and I'm like, that's not, that's not our style. Everyone's got different needs in mm-hmm. scheduling and yeah, really we got to get ready for our league. And then we have a schedule that'll absolutely help us get ready for our league. Absolutely. Yeah. Just a yep, new re- new reality. Like you said, you gotta go, go with it. Um, you know, I did want to ask, you know, a couple of questions, obviously you, you know, you were at URI, uh, under coach Barron, uh, also at PC. I know you told me if you could share that again, a little tidbit about there's a very few that have had the ability to be on a URI staff and also a PC staff. Who's the company you're in again with? There's only three coaches. I believe that have coached at both schools, obviously Eddie, cool. Um, myself and Fran for Schilla, the great analyst for ESPN, you know, and, and we spent five years living in and up in Coventry, Rhode Island. Um, you know, I, I, I love living in Rhode Island. It's, I would say Rhode Island's like its own nation. Um, and, and there's such great pride there and, and really great support. I don't, I don't know if there's a better rivalry than Providence versus Rhodey. Um, it's, it's, but that is a, that's a game, you know, but, but I should for, for the work for coach, you know, he, he gave me an opportunity. I was at the call to Charleston to move back to um, New England and had, had three great years there. Um, really loved it. Uh, you know, we had, we had a second year, we got to the um, conference title. And then last year we, we were in the NIT and spent some time in the top 25. So I've, I've always been a roadie fan. You know, I was, you know, impressed with Danny Hurley did an unbelievable job there. And, and, um, you know, I'm rooting like like heck for for, for Archie and, and Kenny Johnson. I actually hired Kenny. I gave him uh, in college my first year. And big fan of your AD Thor, and you know, I'm I'm looking for great things from the Rams. Definitely, no, me too. I'm very very excited. You know, and I have to ask you, I had, through the grapevine, I heard that one of the main reasons Coach Barron brought you on staff was because he could not convince Jimmy to play for you or I. You had to seal the deal. That's not true. That's not true. Jimmy was a uh, Jimmy was already there. I'm I'm still very close with Jimmy, yeah. and, and uh, you know what a what a career he had. Uh, he's one of the all time all time roadie greats, and it is such a you, you look at Rhode Island basketball the the tradition of great players there, and, and the fan base and, and the Ryan Center. It, it's really a special place. So I'm excited to see them. You know they've had so many great years, and and, and I'm I'm sure. Archie and his staff are going to get, get them right back to where they belong. All right. I'm here with uh, Townsend head coach, Pat Scary, but also a great assistant, uh, not only for Providence college, but also Pittsburgh for a year as well. So uh, thank you for coming on doing a little two minutes in the big East. First question. What was the hardest arena to visit and to play against within the big East? I'm, I'm going to give you two that, that well, I thought Pittsburgh was uh, obviously had coached there. Um, sleeper place was the rack at, at Rutgers. Really hard, really hard place to play. Um, and I thought because, you know, he, I was a Hall of Fame coach at the sidelines. And they were good. Louisville was very, very difficult with Coach Patino there. Definitely. That's the second time in a row I've heard the rack. Ricardo Greer said the same thing. He said that place was tough. Yeah, right. Um, one one player that you felt was one of as a coaching staff just one of the most difficult players it's the big east there's so many but a couple that come to mind just to kind of you know play uh plan to play against kemba at uconn he was uh that was a that's a difficult game plan to put together uh against that guy and i'll give you another guy i thought was I don't want to say underrated, but uh, was when Johnny Flynn was at, at Syracuse. I thought he was a guy that was uh, just dynamic, fast, strong, uh, really difficult to play against. And, and, and West Virginia had some guys with Coach Huggins, uh, Butler, and um, uh, forget Kevin Jones. Those 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 two guys were those are like those are grown men. Yeah. Yep. No, no, definitely. How impressed uh, maybe you were with the Biggies? Just how they were able to regroup keep the garden and still become, you know, one of the best basketball conferences in, in the country. 
Yeah, it's it's really amazing with their conference leadership, and then just institutionally, um, you know what those schools are able to do without having football. I, I always felt like when I was an assistant at Providence, uh, Father Shanley, who was the president, and, and Bob Driscoll and Steve Napolillo, like those, their leadership was just off the charts. They just understood why basketball was important to those institutions, and, and you can see now. I know that look at this is a roadie, roadie Providence is a war, but. Yeah. I mean, the job that Eddie Cool has done and the leadership up at Providence with Steve Napolillo, Bob Driscoll. And I went up there this summer um, and their practice facility is uh, I, I wanted to know where Space Mountain was. I thought <laughs> I was at Disney World. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it. Um, and it, it just blows me away that 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 they, they have that. It's amazing. Yeah. No, it, it, it's impressive. It's great. It's hard not to root for Cooley for Providence in terms of, you know, what they've, what they've built. You know, I don't, I don't think there's a better marriage between a coach and a, you know, and a program just being a Rhode Island guy that Cooley is. But Well, I always thought that was a great thing about like, look at Rhode Island province go to war once a year. And then there's excitement to see, you know, Rhodey win in the Atlantic 10 and, and province win in, in, in the Big East. So just for one day a year, Yep. I remember Tim Welsh, a very successful coach at Providence, told me when I was assistant at Rhode Island, he said, I wish it was the first game of the year just so we could get it out of the way and then move on. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, it's great. I'm looking forward to it always. But, um, well, thank you so much, Coach. You know, I greatly appreciate you uh, coming on. Appreciate you having me. Go, Rhodey. <laughs>